that all right? Let's see if I can finally get this thing done. So I've been picking this thing with headphones the last couple of times. Got, uh, I don't know. I don't know that it's a better ability to hear, but it's different. Uh, so I'm able to actually hear springs move. And while that seems like it would be just way too much noise, it's actually important on this lock because you can make these sliders chatter around all you want, but that doesn't really tell you much. When you can hear the springs crunch, and you can, that tells you that there's a slider pushing into a spring, which is to say you are moving a spring and moving a slider in the correct direction. Um, and so that small discovery, plus just a bunch of uh, fiddling with it here and there, um, managed to get me some progress again. And really, I think probably the most important thing for the progress was I reestablished the ability to progressive pin after putting the sliders in the wrong spot. Uh, I was able to get it apart by shimming it open. So uh, moving some sliders and, and uh, sliding some shims down the backside. So right now it's fully pinned up. We got all four sliders, all four pins. Uh, it seems like you have to do the pins first. It just goes that way. <clears throat> so I'm going to attempt to use a dimple pick to do that part. Uh, they are not very complicated. It's not the pins themselves are the least of your worries on this lock. That's much more about the magnet magnet sliders. You can see those three in the front all about the same depth and number four is just a little bit lower. You do actually have to touch them. I thought I was under the assumption that that's a zero lift, but it's not. You do have to touch it. Um, so because of the way it's cut and because of the way the ridge exists in the lock, or the two rails, I, I should say, on either side of this, basically what I'm looking at inside is trying to make the pins line up with the top of these fins. So um, all of the three... The three in front, you just depress to the tops of the rails, and then the last one is just a little bit higher than that. I don't know if that's standard or not. I didn't look. I was going to go back through the videos and look a little closer and see if they're all like that or, if, or what, but I'm assuming that they're not all like that. Either way, this lock loves to ping pong. Uh, as soon as you get some sliders set, the other ones come loose and... Uh, I never really was able to lock it down for certain that it was from side to side, but I did start to have more success when I would pick all of the three on the right hand side and then the one on the left hand side. What's up, Reed and Rune? I think maybe I actually got this. Um, we'll see. Tonight's going to be especially boring, though, because I think I'm going to do it with headphones. So hopefully this doesn't take very long. Uh, I can take it apart and kind of walk you through it a little bit. Uh, the Lockpickers United channel actually already has a Pick and Gut video on this and a Teardown Tuesday from back when we did all alliteration on all of our video titles. Um, and they're both solid videos. But Craig Jeans' method, uh, Captain Hook's method... Um, wound up being slightly different than what's gotten me into this one. I tried to follow their lead insofar as uh, figuring out what the lock wants based on sound and it, it just didn't work. Um, I don't know, I think it has a diff I think there's a difference between the magnets I've got and the magnets they had. And CJ even did mention that in his video. He said you, you've got two different strengths at, at least um, in the one by two millimeter neodymium magnets. Some are stronger than others and you can't do it with the weak ones. I think what I've got going on here is I do have weak ones and I just have cranked up the sound so loud that I'm able to do it with the weaker magnets. Uh, either that or I'm just totally wrong. We'll see.
Mm. Still lit. No one knows how magnets work, Federico. No one knows. Corn cop says magic. I am stalling Naswick. I'm getting I'm getting into my mode here. Sort of talking through the things that I've discovered so that I don't forget something and then uh, go picking at it for half an hour and remember. So, if I do get this one knocked out tonight and it's in a reasonable amount of time, then probably what I'm going to do is try and lay out the next one because I'm not done doing this. I'm going to do another gauntlet after this. Um, and eventually I'll do enough of them that will add up to more than one black belt. But I've only done one of each lock, and in this run I didn't do a challenge lock. I did do a special tool, and I didn't really do um, a quest or any of that. So. If this were like an actual run to black belt with all the side requirements, I would still need to do a quest and a quest and a project. And I've got part of a, a part of two different lock from scratch projects going, so I could finish one of those and just then figure out a, a challenge lock real quick. But I'd still need more black lock, so I'm just gonna keep going with the one per belt and. If I'm not feeling it, then I'll skip over it because you don't really have to do the earlier ones. That's just because of the gauntlet. That's why I pulled them out to do them. Anyway, let's get going here. Um, hopefully this isn't super terribly boring for you. I'm going to do the dimples without sound. But when I turn the sound on, I'm going to do headphones um, because that was working for me. So here we go. Uh, that's not the flag I want. Where'd it go? There it is. Alright, so I need to find that one. That was number two. I'm really just sort of just grazing over the top of these because they don't need to move a whole lot. I'm trying to find the one that is binding first. for sure. That was number three, four is still springy. This one? I think I overset one on that run. Let's try that again. Is there anybody in the chat that's actually been for all of these? Been here for all of these? I know they're like sometimes very late at night, depending on where you are in the world. Oh, there's something there. I'm just getting pure springiness. I don't know why. I never did establish a binding order on this. I just kind of picked it a couple of times and decided that the pins wouldn't be the problem, but that's how it goes, right? You decide something's not going to be the problem and then it becomes it. And I can, I can sort of see down into this keyway. And that's really more about depth and spacing for me 
because I didn't take the time to mark my pick where it needs to be. I could have done that, but I did not. But after this, playing with this lock this long, I definitely have a healthy respect for me one now. Okay. I felt a little bit of quarter rotation there. And the sound will tell me the truth. Can I put these on with one hand? That's the big question. Okay. So now my sound is amplified by about a million. I know you guys can't tell the difference, but... So number one, number one's bound up and so is number three. So that tells me we're off on the pins at least for now. So I got one, two, and four on the right-hand side, number three on the left-hand side, whole right-hand side's free and jiggling, so I got to pick three. Three's free. One is bound again. Two and four are still loose. One's loose. Two's loose. Four's loose. Three's bound. Three is free. One's free. Two is free. Four is free. I think I tricked myself. I think three is still unset. Yeah, three is still unset. Three's free. Sounds like they're all free, which means I might have dropped a pin. Let's look at the pins. Hearing is actually more distracting. That extra hearing when you're doing the pins. I did have a pin loose.
click out of the number four in there. Ah, uh, there it is. Definitely drop some pins in the process. side is still picked. Number three is not. Well, it sounds like it's moving actually. Okay, that's a false set. Sounds like three set. One is not. Two is not. Four is. So I got the back half of the lock. I need two and one now. Nice click there, two set, three still set, four is still set. Let's see if I can get number one without dropping anything else. It'd be a miracle. That one, lost two, lost four. Just so you guys know, if you ever want to pick one of these, you're not actually, it's not pure ping pong, um, because you're not actually losing stuff every time. You're moving further down the slider. When I get to the end, I'll show you what the slider looks like. Um, it's, got a, it's got two lips on it. So you're kind of like shifting a slider over until it gets loose and turning the core. And then another one gets stuck. And then once you have them all picked, it drops down to the next shelf and you got to do them all again. And that's assuming you drop nothing. So That's Cherry Pepsi, by the way. It's the Nectar of the Gods. All right. So I lost two and four. Um, I'm going to try four first. Yeah, I'm going to try four first. Got four back. Still got three. Still don't have two. Still have one. I got one, two, and four. I have three. Got three back. Still have one. Lost two. Lost four.
one back. Let's see if I lost three. No, oh, three is still very free. So I have one. <laughs> oh man <laughs> well that took way more effort than anything I've picked in a very long time um, and the intent was to show you the whole thing but I just couldn't like there was there was some time you know I can't stream in the 15 minutes out of the day that I have to go mess mess around with it and fiddle with it. So let me gut this thing before I forget and mess that all up. Um, I've got some cleaning up to do on this lock so I can send it back to CJ without being embarrassed about uh, the way I treated it. There's a little bit of super glue on the outside. I can clean that off. But Hooray! I'm pretty sure that's the fastest pick time on uh, anything past purple, so not well, not if you include the previous <laughs> sessions. Celebratory smoke on that one. Man, it feels good. I haven't picked a black belt lock in, since the Bantam. That was like a, almost a full year ago. Thanks for being here, guys. I'm gonna hop in the Discord and give myself black belt back. I looked the other day, it's actually been three three or four weeks of this. I've been trying to do this gauntlet. The, the gauntlet was supposed to be one video, right? The gauntlet was supposed to be white to black, one shot. Uh, I still got it, and it was not that. But you know, that happens. All right, I'm gonna type something so I can click on my own name. Okay, so that was fun, and it didn't last very long. It's still early, but uh, I'm back to regular working hours again, so I can't hang out super late, but uh, I want to pick more stuff, so I'm going to go find some other stuff to pick. Oh, you know what? I told you I was going to forget. Let me get this thing. It occurs to me that people always show you the lock and like how it freely rotates. And then they show you the back for some reason. Like the back would be doing something other than what the front's doing. I'm not really sure why that became a thing, but it's a thing. Let's see, I lost some of my pad from gluing this on here. And I got the crazy C clip on this thing. So, probably shouldn't have got rid of my vice just, just yet. Make sure I keep this in view and all that. And, all right, let's flip it around and get the C clip off first.
Okay. So I figured out after messing with this thing a couple of times that this tiny little flathead tip is actually small enough to fit into the hole on this on this guy, this clip. But uh, I am convinced 100% that I need to buy snap ring pliers. Should have done that while I've been fighting with this, but I just never did. Let me put this down for a second. Alright. Clip. Spacer. We're going to dump the pins out of the top because it's already trying to sad me what itself. Just take this out, take this key out so I can't get itself loose. Our tray here. For the fun part. Lock body. Uh, I'll shake that down. These out without losing anything. I should have got my plier, my tweezers out, but oh well. Uh, let's pull out another tray here. I had a mo tray going. Slider and one spring. For those of you guys that were concerned about me not having put it back together correctly, I did. And also, I appreciate the concern. I said, don't close it yet. Uh, number two slider, number two spring. These things are fling, fling, and tiny. This sharpened 15,000 Peterson hook to deal with it. Three. And spring. And four. And spring. And notice these parts were left out. This is the tailpiece, drill protection that slides in the front, and the two screws that hold the cam and the tailpiece on. None of which affect picking in any way, so they were left off. Just to save myself a step. Get over there. All right. Sliders. I'm gonna get you a good close up on these sliders so you can see exactly why they're so annoying. It's a really cool lock. Um, 
I'm sure there's plenty of magnetic locks out there that I don't know about, but just the fact that it's a magnetic lock that's different than, say, System M, MCS, LZ, which are all based around rotors, it's kind of neat that it's, uh, it's sliders in this one. Okay, so everything's still in shot here. I'm going to slide this over. I'm trying to be careful about this. My tripod legs are like hooked on the workbench here. Yeah. Okay, let's see if I can zoom in on, ooh, you can zoom in on YouTube. Okay, so look at these, look at these sliders here. I'm gonna try and zoom in again. Oh. You look at the lip here, this, this part here, this ledge is what's sprung. So the spring just sits down in, uh, what do I do with the body? Ah, it's just laying over here. They sit down in these little pockets and they're stuck on there. And then they push off of this fin on each slider. So that's how they're sprung into the lock body. Uh, and you can see, well, you can see these two lips right here. This is what they get hung on. And that first one, you can see how it's angled. They're not just angled upwards, they're angled left and right as well. If you look really close at them, uh, which I don't think I can do with this particular view, some of them are cut slightly left and some of them are cut slightly right, and they're opposing, so they really fight you. You got these tiny, tiny little springs, which are not magnetic, and then you've got your Oh, there it goes. Okay. Where are we left off? You see these key pins are nothing special. Uh, I think the only thing about them that is special is that they're not magnetic. So I don't know what they're made out of, but that's not steel. And then you've got... Let's see if I can get up close on that. This is what the driver pins look like. Little, little lip on each one of them, but um, based on what I felt picking it, it didn't do anything. So yeah, he got it in one take. It counts. Yeah, I I would call that a fair game shot there. Anyway, um, so lock body. Let's see. Pretty neat. It's a different construction. It looks like they jammed this in there afterward, after milling it. Um, and then this is that outer lock body. And you see it's got these little square spots for the sliders to go out and grab things, which they are oh so good at doing. But again, different sort of construction. It looks like they're added afterward. So. Very cool lock. Uh, thanks again, Correct Jeans, for lending it to me. Sorry I scratched up the back. I got, I put some scratches in the back here fighting that C clip because I did not have the correct tools. But um, yeah, so the end of the next one is going to have to be the System M. Uh, where's the key? If you're not familiar, this is what a system M looks like from the front. It's a Zeiss icon. And this is what the key looks like. You got four disc magnets on either side, which are not your average run of the mill magnets. They are uh, biased in a particular direction. And they rotate magnetic rotors on either side of the lock to the correct angle. Not angle, to, to the correct degree. And that's what opens the lock. 
this is uh, a ball bearing, I think, for key control, and there's a couple of cuts on the side here. But that's not really any part of the picking process. It's just there to uh, make sure you're not using the wrong key, I think. But they're just, they're so smooth. And this one, unlike the one I just picked, well, you can't see through it because there's no light. But uh, there's nothing to interact with in this keyway. It's totally different. It's, a, it's counterintuitive to any other type of picking that you're used to because there's no... There's no physical feedback whatsoever. The only feedback you can get is audio. So you gotta strap a mic to the thing. And uh, yeah. So I don't know, I'm gonna pick something easy real quick and I don't know, maybe call it a night right there. So I'd say I, I kind of I feel obligated to rank this among the black belt locks that I've picked. Um, so I gotta run through them real quick. Bantam has since been downgraded to red, and for good reason. I don't think all of them uh, truly were black belt locks. Some of them were, some of them weren't. Uh, so that was the easiest. Then 3KS. Then uh, MT5 Plus. Then ICS. Then Dual. Uh, this one probably sits uh, about the same level as ICS. I don't think it's as hard as the Dual was. Uh, but the one that I had was just a monster. So, yeah. Um, I would not go after this thing as your first black belt lock, that's for sure. But uh, I grabbed a couple of locks. I set this, this is some no name Taiwanese lock with four pins in it. I decided to purposefully choose something very, very easy for my white belt lock because the last one embarrassed the shit out of me. Uh, <laughs> The master lock that tag out I think is still green. So the white green. 64 TI 40. Uh, anybody still in the chat that knows which belt this is? Otherwise, I'm gonna have to look it up. Orange. Okay. Mark. Mark C. Zubin. Cuban with a Z in it for some reason says it's orange. Sorry if that's the, your actual last name. Surprisingly hard orange. Ooh, maybe this will be the one that beats me up this time. Let me look. Yeah, it looks pretty jagged. Uh, keep losing the stream. I don't know what it is. It might be my connection tonight. Maybe mine just has hard bidding. Mine kind of picks like an 80 Ti 50, which is green and drops pins. I had an 80 Ti, and that thing, uh, on my original run through the belts, I had an 80 Ti. And it beat me, I don't know, six, seven times. Finally, I just put it to the side and kept going. Uh, I don't think I ever did pick it or sent it to somebody. Uh, all right, so let me see if I can dig up a yellow belt real quick.
What's a master number one? Is that yellow? Master number one's white. Hmm. I don't know if I have a yellow. Let me take a look. Let's pull up the list real quick. Instead of doing it the way I'm doing it. Sixty-four Ti. This is yellow. Oh, it says four pins or fewer. One, two, three, four, five. Okay. So what else do I have that could fit that? Don't have any of those. I've never even heard of some of these. Quick set mortise. Just a regular old quick set is yellow. I might have one of those. Percentage. Okay, so if I can find a Schlage or quick set mortise, Master Lock, oh, Master Lock 140, V line. Sherlock Magnum. Maybe I'll put Magnum. Let's see. Yeah, here's a quick set of mortars. So we got white, yellow, orange, green, need a blue. It's a good blue. I have like 9 million 1100s, but I'm not sure if I got one pinned up at the moment. Justin sent me a duo for purple. I'm not sure which one it is. Is it his or just the one that's all jacked up? I think his was in better shape than this. This is his, it's in much better shape. All right, so there's purple, brown. Somebody said that uh, this guy is brown that I'm holding on to for the giveaway. I might be able to pick this with Justin's uh, Brass McSlappy before I pass it on. Anybody want to fact check that? Avis plus 88 slash 40 using someone else's tool. Is that brown or is that red? Yeah, open the chat back up. I can't even see what you guys are saying.
I need to look this up. So let's pull up the list again here. It's separated by belt now. Oh, no, that just takes you to where it is on the page. All right, so let's find Avis 8840. That would be my first disk detainer lock. Avis Plus. It just says Avis Plus, and then there's a bunch of asterisks. Where are the asterisks? If picked with front tension counts as one belt lower, this does not apply when the front disc is a butterfly disc. Fox picks this one. It must be demonstrated to gut this. Blah, blah, blah. Huh. Okay. So I have to rear tension it, I suppose, to keep it as a brown belt. I think that's what that means. If picked with a tool that the picker has made themselves modified significantly from other tools, then this lock counts as red belt. Does that is that note even on that? Yeah, it is. But I didn't make the pick. I don't have a disc detainer pick that I've made. So this can be brown so long as I don't front tension it. Uh, let me see what his pick is set up to do. Looks like a front tension, so that would make it purple. Whoops. So I guess I'll probably sub in this guy then. <clears throat> this is my LPU Mako for doing the giveaway. Ben was kind enough to make me double zero. Well, this guy's out. Uh, all right, so that's for, that's brown. I need a red. What do I have for red? I've got those M hearts, but I already did an M heart. And I probably don't need to worry about that tonight because I doubt I'll make it that far. So, I don't know. Maybe I'll have to double up and just like redo the Pollux or something. Or maybe I can borrow one in time. Can't his be set up for rear tension as well? Yeah, I don't know. Uh, he's got, there's a couple of different tips that come with it, but I don't want to mess with it too much. Like, I would be okay with using it in its current configuration once before I give it out, but I also don't want to break it, so. Um, man, my quality is just not great right now. Connection is garbage, I guess. <laughs> Okay, so let me move this Miwa to somewhere where I won't lose parts. Just try out of here. Got all these locks taken apart that I need to put back together and give back to the people that lent them to me. See if we can make it to brown before I call it a night. What time is it? Shit, it's eleven o'clock. All right, I'll just I'm just gonna bust through the ones that I can knock out real real easy. And if I hit any sort of resistance, then I'll start another one later. Another time. I can't be up all night. I need some regular tools. Oh, this is perfect opportunity to try this out. So. Peterson put together some uh, pick sets based on selections from people in our community and uh, Mo made one called the Wombat, or designed one anyway, called the Wombat that Peterson made. And when it came time for doing reviews and stuff, he didn't want to do it. So I agreed to do a review for it, just not on the channel because we don't do reviews or 
any sort of thing like that. Uh, I try to stay very impartial because uh, we've seen it make cause issues with other channels in the past. So I haven't really given it a whole lot of time and I'm going to now. I have used it on a couple of padlocks just to see uh, what the tensioners were like. You got a 40 thousandths and a 50 thousandths. And I'm a big fan of 50 thousandths tension, tension wrenches. So. Alright, here's the white one. Let's hope it doesn't embarrass me like the last one did. Use... I need to figure out what these colors mean. I know they're different thicknesses, I just don't know which one's which. Two blacks, two purples, and three blues. Anybody know off the top of their head what the thicknesses are for Peterson? Yes, no, maybe so. Black is 25, and pink is 18. I think blue is 15. I know blue is 15 and black being 25 makes sense because I have I have purchased individual black and blues before. So purple is 18, huh? All right. So this little guy looks like four pins. So the pins, no, that's another wafer lock. Four wafers. Yeah, it really doesn't like top of the QA at all. So we'll go with these bigger I'll make it work that's really loose Okay, there's one. Oh, that's spring loaded. It's gonna launch it back now. <laughs> All right, just white. Good old quick set, skeletonized piece of shit rim. I love them. Too thin for 50. I'll try out this 40 on it. Yeah. You see, there's another 25,000 short hook. hands a few times before I got my hands on it. You know, now that I think about it, I think this is the lock that I used. We had a, a moment on the channel where we were trying to figure out how to restructure and uh, fit enough videos into all of our lives basically. And so we did a week that was called like LPU Unlocked or something like that. And we just basically spit out a bunch of picking videos. Let's go a little thinner here. And one of them was, uh, I think this lock versus a old Yale padlock. Cause the Yale padlock could kick my ass a couple of times. And this thing I just like raked open in a few seconds, but as you know, garbage locks can be a lot more annoying to single pin pick than they can be to rake. Yeah. I can't even feel anything. What's going on with this lock? Let's try a little bottom of the cube 
protection on this guy. I almost feel like this thing is missing parts or something. Like it's acting really weird. Maybe we should destroy it for science. Oh, that was a false set. Can't imagine that there's security pins in here. Maybe there are. There's some counter rotation. Must be at least a spool in here. I think this is a challenge rod. Exactly sure what's going on with this thing. Maybe giving it too much tension. Feel like it should be rotating at this point. It is stuck on something. After I'm done struggling with this thing needlessly, uh, oh, there it goes. I'm going to break out the rake and see if this is the one I thought it, I think it is. Although I sacrificed my city rake to the rake gods. So. Right. 
Maybe that's not the same one. I don't know if that one would just like fly open if you stuck a rake in it. All right, so that's yellow. This is the orange belt. Somebody was saying can be difficult. It's probably gonna be difficult for me. Fifteen thousands. I don't often pick the fifteen thousands, but this little keyway is pretty tight. So battle with an abus is just finding a place in the keyway that that's happy and you can still have room to move I don't know if I can bypass this board and get it straight up and down set somewhere by now. Let's see. Now you definitely can't go straight up and down on that guy. This profile may not do it for me. Anything lower. Not really.
There it goes. Yeah, I put up a pretty good little fight. It's mostly just trying to figure out how to get in there past these pins. It's got a... I mean, none of these are even really low cut. That bedding's not hard at all. But that keyway is pretty, pretty challenging. I've always known that about Avis though. They do good. They do well with keyways. Alright, so that's orange. Hopefully this lock is still functional. Yeah. This is the one I copied the key and pewter on. And these are famous for being one of Master Lock's better locks. At least core wise. And body. Body's made out of plastic, obviously, so it's not going to be resistant to physical attack. You know the drill. All right, so this is 50. Can't get a 50 in there. We got a 40. Nope. Looks like 40's a good fit. Look at how loose that is. Okay. So if I remember correctly, all four tens have security pins in them. Um, I'm not sure what kind, but I'm guessing spools. Because master lock and security pins tend to be spools. What kind of pick do I want to use for this? Let's try it. Let's go back and give this guy a fair shake. Fifteen thousand. So I'm not sure which hook this is. Uh, number five. That's sort of hard to read. spot to work through here. I keep shifting the core for uh, four and a half on it. Maybe there are serratus in here? Maybe I'm just getting hung up a lot. I don't know. Any uh, Master Lock Lockout Tag Out wizards out there? Five spools, one serrated. Tension from the bottom and give myself the whole top of that keyway open. One of these guys is thick. Am I going against the body there? Or is that actually going to work for me? That might work. Where do we go? It's a real low profile.
optimal pick and tension setup for this. Uh, let's see. Let's try this dual probe dude. Let's see if I can get some sort of some sort of movement. I must have a low cut in here that's getting overset. These cores are annoying. You get a low cut pin or two, they're just right up. That sort of square transition, square off transition right there is just enough to stop your pick slipping by, I think. Maybe I didn't try hard enough. Maybe I need to try that again with the 15 thousandths. I certainly don't like bottom of the key retention. I'm never convinced that it's uh, that it's good, even when I'm in a good position. It just never feels good. All right, let's try that again from the top. Everything feels mushy. Why is it so mushy?
What's the conventional wisdom on lockout and tagouts for pension amount? Is it a lot or a little? I don't remember. Well, I don't know. I'm moving pins around, but I don't feel much of anything. It's pretty mushy. And it's starting to get late, so. I'm gonna call it here. I'm not really making a strong run at it tonight. Uh, what is that? Stopping at green belt. Pick it back up there when we do the next one. Anyway, thanks for coming and hanging out. The eight of you that are still hanging out. Hey, CJ was in the house at some point. I missed that. Or that just happened. I don't know. I'm terrible at watching the, the chat. <sighs> Five minutes ago. Okay. All right, fellas. I'll catch you next time. Have a good one.